Um, yeah, it's great to be kicking off this session on translating new technologies um, into healthcare practice. Um, as we can see from this slide here, the number of clinical trials registered over the last two decades has massively increased, and this shows um, the rate of innovation and the development of new technologies is increasing. But the development of a new technology or an effective intervention is only the beginning of the journey, and translating this into practice um, can be slow and it can be challenging for a number of reasons and it may not be as effective in the population in the real world setting as it is in the ideal world of the clinical trial. A very pertinent example of this is uh, the development of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines and as we can see from this figure the development of these SARS-CoV-2 vaccines happened at record time. Not one but several candidates were developed, trialed and approved within 12 months but this was just the beginning of their journey. The next stage is to deliver these to the target population, which is the whole world at the moment. Um, and Tanahashi in, in a classic paper outlined five dimensions or five challenges in terms of achieving high coverage of interventions. The first is availability, so that it's about um, achieving delivery, supply chains, um, training the healthcare workforce to deliver the interventions. The next challenge is making the intervention accessible. So even though we provide it in our health services, not all of the population may be able to reach the service and there may be barriers to do with cost, uh, transport or physical barriers. And even for the population that can access the intervention, there may be a smaller proportion who are willing to use the intervention and that's reflected in the acceptability ring. Um, and then the next level is of those who accept the intervention, a smaller proportion will actually use it for various reasons. And of those who use the intervention, not all of them will receive effective care um, due to lack of adherence or not using the intervention as it was intended. So going back to the COVID vaccine example, we can see here um, huge global disparities in coverage and availability of vaccines with North America and Western Europe having very good availability and being on track to achieve high coverage by the end of this year. But Sub-Saharan Africa and much of Asia having very limited supply and being on a much slower trajectory towards achieving full coverage. But even with plentiful supply of vaccines and even a surplus of vaccines, um, there may be a limit to the coverage that can be achieved. And what we can see here with the UK, Germany and the United States is that they're reaching a, a plateau in terms of the level of coverage. And a lot of this is to do with acceptability. There's a section of the population who aren't willing to be vaccinated. So now moving on from one global pandemic to another, which has been with us for longer, which is a anti antibiotic resistance. And specifically, I want to focus uh, for the rest of this talk on interventions aimed to reduce antibiotic prescribing in primary healthcare. In this paper by Katie Bell and colleagues, um, they looked at several interventions to minimize antibiotic pres prescribing for acute respiratory infections in primary care. And, and try to estimate which of them would have the highest impact at population level. So they multiplied the reported trial effectiveness by the population uptake. They compared four interventions, uh, delayed prescribing, procalcitonin tests, C-reactive protein tests, and shared decision-making. Decision and they extracted from Cochrane systematic reviews the summary relative risks. And these were all very highly effective interventions. Then they looked at the uptake um, and they saw what you can see here in green is a very small proportion of doctors used these interventions and used them as intended. And so thereby they didn't prescribe antibiotics. Another small proportion in yellow used the intervention, but they didn't follow the recommendations and they still prescribed antibiotics. But the biggest proportion here is doctors who didn't use the intervention at all. And that poses the biggest constraint for these interventions in, in achieving population impact. So then looking at the numbers, um, we can see here that none of the interventions had very high uptake. They were all below 30%. And this translates into population impacts that are much smaller than the, the effectiveness reported in the trials. So now I want to illustrate this with a, a, an example from our work in Vietnam. Um, we've just completed the ICAT trial, which is looking at the implementation of C-reactive protein point of care testing to improve antibiotic prescribing in primary healthcare settings. 
The background to this comes from the same systematic review that was reported by Katie Bell and showed a significant effect of um, C-reactive protein tests in reducing antibiotic prescribing. But these trials were all done in high income countries. So following on from this, our colleagues at Ocru did a trial in Vietnam, which also demonstrated that C CRP was highly effective at reducing antibiotic prescribing in primary healthcare. And this was followed by another trial in Thailand and Myanmar, which showed a small but significant reduction in antibiotic prescribing in this setting as well. But both of these trials were traditional randomized control trials. They were individually randomized and they weren't delivered in routine care settings. There had been no pragmatic trial in a low or middle income country. So we wondered what would happen if we translated these interventions into routine care. And we looked back at the systematic review uh, article where they had done a subgroup analysis on individually randomized trials and cluster randomized trials. So trials randomized by health facility, which are more like routine care. And the routine care trials showed uh, a much stronger effect. And they hypothesized that this was because of contamination in the individually randomized trials with the same doctors seeing patients in both the intervention and the control groups and transferring some of their changed prescribing practice into the control group as well. But on the other hand, when we translate our intervention into a, a real world setting, as we've seen in the example of COVID vaccines, we may lose some impact because of lower uptake. So in the, the, um, the original trial in Vietnam, it showed a 30% relative reduction in prescribing, but there was 100% uptake because it was a controlled trial setting and all patients were given the CRP test. In a real world setting, the uptake may be much lower than that. And if it's 50% uptake, we'll half the population impact and as, as the uptake decreases, the impact will decrease. So now let's go on to the study design. The primary research question was, what impact does CRP point of care testing have on the proportion of patients aged one to 65 with respiratory infections who are prescribed an antibiotic? And this is in routine primary care. So it's a pragmatic randomized control trial. In a traditional randomized control trial, the at-risk population is screened to see if they meet the eligibility criteria and patients who meet the criteria and consent to being part of the trial are randomized. In a pragmatic trial, we train the doctors to um, identify which patients the test is recommended for. So the doctors decide who to use the test for um, and consent is done at facility level. So it's not done at patient level and it doesn't interrupt the routine um, clinical consultation. This is one of the commune health centres included in our study. And the study was done in Namding province, which is 100 kilometres southeast of Hanoi. It was in three districts and 48 commune health centres. These were randomised to two arms, half with the CRP testing intervention, and half with routine care. And a subsample of patients was followed up after two weeks um, to ask about subsequent antibiotic use. Um, duration of symptoms and any adverse events. And we also linked to hospital data to look at hospitalization rates. The intervention was the Actim CRP Rapid Diagnostic Test Kit, which comes with a, a lateral flow test and a tube of buffer. Um, the doctor takes a, a prick of blood from the finger and puts it onto the, the test strip. Results are available in five minutes and provide a semi quantitative measure of C-reactive protein, which is a, a biomarker of inflammation and can be used to differentiate between bacterial and viral infections. So doctors were trained to follow the, the following guidelines. If the uh, level of CRP was below 10 milligrams per litre, no antibiotics are recommended. It's very unlikely to be a bacterial infection. If the CRP is between 10 and 40, antibiotics are also unlikely to be needed, but doctors can prescribe on their discretion based on their clinical decision. Um, and above 40 milligrams per litre, we combined the top two groups, antibiotics are recommended and referral if necessary. And now I'll hand over to Nga, who will give us uh, an overview of the preliminary results. Thanks, Sonia. So I, I'd like to present about the, uh, firstly about the trial profile. 
Uh, in total, 73 common health centers were accessed for the eligibility, and among them, 25 centers were excluded because did not uh, fulfill the inclusion criteria. For example, 14 centers uh, did not have a physics and, uh, and 11 centers recruited less than 40 AI patients per month. That is not a sufficient number of the caseload. So the remaining of 48 centers uh, were then enrolled and randomized to either the routine care arm or the CRP uh, point of care test intervention arm. Next, please. Um, so the trial started in June last year and the data were collected monthly from the Common Health Central electronic uh, system. Um, and now the, over the four first month of the intervention, the average uptake rate of the CRP intervention were 11%. Um, this uh, were calculated based on the total eligible AI patient recorded in the CSC electronic system, uh, where we aware that there's number of the patients um, did not visit the CSC in person, but they were treated. Uh, so the CRP intervention could not be uh, could not target those patients, leading to the underestimate of the uptake rate calculations. Next, please. Um, so to try to uh, to be able to calculate um, the uptake rate of the interventions more accurately, uh, since October last year, we introduced the screening logbook. Uh, beside the CSC existing uh, the electronic uh, system. Uh, to require the healthcare provider recorded only the patient that visited the CSC in person and to exclude the non presenting patients. Um, and also, additionally, in uh, early this year, uh, the community sensitization package was also added to increase the exposure to the intervention in the um, intervention arm by the louder speaker advice, uh, advertising the CRP test in 24 village of the CRP arm. Um, next, please. So uh, after the introducing the screening logbook uh, in both arm to improve the documentation of the total eligible AI patients, uh, we can see the uptake rate inc increase um, with the average uh, of the 41% in the eight months. Um, this increase is not because of the increasing in the number of the CRP tested, but uh, because of the decline in the eligible AI patient recorded in the screening logbook. Next, please. Uh, however, the data from the uh, logbook, um, we also also the bias in the documentations because um, several common health, common health centers, they just recorded the patients with the CRP tested only. So the data in the logbook um, was not reliable enough for us to do the analysis. That's why we um, decided to base the intention to treat analysis in the whole population of AI patients from the CSC electronic uh, system uh, with nearly 40,000 patients records were extracted from this system. And um, the un uh, un um, absolute reduction in antibiotic prescription um, was 5% from 98% in the control arm to the 93% in the CRP arm. Next. Um, and the larger reduction were observed in the uh, per protocol analysis for the group of the 2,606 patients received the CRP test. Uh, that uh, antibiotic prescription uh, in this group was 71%. Um, and uh, about half of the patient with the CRP tested, um, they have a low CRP value of less than 10 milligram per liter, which is antibiotic prescription was not recommended. And only 51% of those patients receive anti initial antibiotic prescriptions. The reduction remains significant for the patient with the immediate uh, CRP value uh, of from 10 to 40 milligram per liter. And for the patient with the high CRP value of, of uh, about 40, we didn't see any increase um, of antibiotic, significant increase in the antibiotic prescription. Next, please. So it means that when the CRP um, were performed, the healthcare worker did comply with the guidance of the CRP-based therapy. And one of the secondary endpoints uh, assessing about the duration of symptoms uh, 
we um, observe the similarity between arms, uh, indicating that the CRT intervention uh, could help to reduce antibiotic prescription without compromising patient uh, recovery. Uh, as uh, similar to the finding from previous published uh, trials in both high income and low and middle income settings, as uh, Sonia already presented in the previous slides. Next, please. Um, however, um, we also uh, observed the uh, considerable low CRP uptake rate. So we conducted a number of the in-depth interviews with both healthcare workers and the patients to understanding better about the reason associated with this uh, low uptake rate. And from the healthcare worker um, perspective, um, several reasons were reported, um, including the patient expectation for antibiotics when they visit uh, the, the health facilities, uh, doctor want to maintain the work relationship with their uh, patients who are living in the same and small village, um, lack of the consultation time, uh, limited uh, consultation skill, and some have a work on so express their doubts in the CRP credibility. Um, and as I mentioned in the earlier um, slide, that there was the number of the non-presenting patients that the, our intervention could not target. And obviously, uh, some impact from the COVID-19 situation that uh, restricted the number of the visits uh, for the patient with the COVID-like symptoms. Next, please. Um, from the patient perspective, the um, interview um, patient reported uh, some reasons uh, regarding their limited knowledge about the ARI, uh, um, the um, acute respiratory illness antibiotics and antibiotic resistance in general, and most of them uh, show the misperception uh, about the antibiotic functions that uh, can help to recover disease quickly. Um, and also they received the limited explanation about the CRP test, so they, um, they do not really um, understand about the purpose and also um, why they need to take the CRP test. Um, last but not least, um, some patients also express their fear of the pain, uh, so they refuse to take the test. Next, please. Um, so with the pragmatic trial to minimize the um, uh, disruption to the practice, um, our, inter uh, our intervention face to the big kit challenge of the low um, uptake rate. So among the 98% of the patients, nearly 100% of the AI patients receiving antibiotics uh, in the common health centers, um, only 40% of them presenting the CAC uh, in person, and uh, only 41 uh, of the, of the patients presenting um, accepted the CRP test, resulting in only 16% of all patients with the ARI exposed to the intervention and the remaining uh, bigger parts of uh, 48% uh, still need the other um, activities are appropriate, more appropriate uh, intervention to, uh, to reduce the um, appropriate antibiotic use. Um, so even uh, you see the positive outcomes were achieved, the finding from uh, considerable low uptake rate emphasize that in different settings with the country's specific health uh, facility and uh, Culture feature uh, likely have different um, barriers that need to be identified and addressed uh, with appro uh, appropriate interventions. For example, combining um, CRP intervention with other ASP uh, activities to achieve uh, optimal effectiveness in uptake of any new uh, diagnostic technology uh, strategy. Next, please. Uh, so, to end of our talk, I would like to thank uh, to all the uh, investigator in the study team from Oku, Vietnam, Moru, Thailand, and um, Phi in Switzerland, uh, also with the uh, local partners from National Hospital for Tropical Diseases, um, the provincial this Department of Health, and uh, especially thanks to all the doctors, um, nurses, and the patients from participating 40 common health centers for their great collaboration um, in, during the study implementations. Uh, thank you very much for your listening.